Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I'm TX88, and I'll be your commentator tonight along with the Haxer for the grand finals of GSA's Super Mario Bros. 3 100% tournament between Mitch Flower Power and Zukubi. So similar to the bronze match that took place last Tuesday, this match will, uh, will also be best 2 of 3. So each race is estimated to be about an hour and 11 minutes in the, or an hour and 12 minutes, uh, considering their caliber. So do get some snacks uh, handy because they'll be playing each one back to back. Um, granted, maybe a couple minutes between. I do believe they're still in the process of setting up, um, so please hang tightly and we'll be starting shortly. But uh, in the meantime, um, so worth noting that SMB 300% is well over an hour long, so there's going to be plenty of opportunities for surprises to come up along the way. Uh, you can never call it too early. So uh, even for players that um, are at the top of the leaderboard, it's tough to be perfect for over an hour, uh, as consistent as both players may be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, if you, you don't get the memo about the snacks, there's always going to be time during the World 4 airship. Of, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> we should be getting started here quickly, though. Um, but, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm actually really excited about this match. It's kind of like the old guard versus the, you know, up-and-coming guy in Zakubi here. I mean, he's been fantastic over the last several months. Uh, probably right now, since Mitch isn't always playing the game, maybe the most consistent runner uh, of the game currently. And Mitch has, of course, been uh, running SMB3 for close to nine years now and has been participating in these GDQ events since at least as far back as 2014. He holds the world record for this category with a time of 110.14 and holds records for two other major categories as well. The, of course, any percent warpless and any percent no wrong warp, uh, all of which are times that he's brought down over the past year. And as Haxer alluded to earlier, uh, Zakubi has, in a way, been a sort of dark horse in the in the SMB3 speedrunning community, uh, especially in recent months. I want to say he started running the game just over the past year and has uh, has been improving at a really alarming rate. He has a PB of 100 um, of 110.46, which um, already is top 10 material on the leaderboards. Both players are, um, of course, very consistent, even in average no reset performances, as demonstrated by their amazing ability uh, to perform under pressure uh, throughout this tournament. So it will, without a doubt, be an awesome show. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw a little bit of difference of, of Strat in the beginning here. Uh, Mitch deciding to grab the mushroom in one one. He kind of does as a safety, just in case you miss one of those jumps and run into a Koopa or a Goomba or something. And Zakubi, Zakubi foregoing it and going for it in one three. And really, the the difference right now is just uh, that one three between these two players. So it looks like uh, Mitch had a little bit of cleaner one three, but uh, we'll be uh, moving in the harder levels, obviously, uh, as we progress in this game. So um, not to say the beginning isn't hard, which of course we all know it is. There's a lot of factors that can um, that can affect your um, that could affect your time really early on in the run, and it's probably one of the most common reset points uh, just in the game period, barring of course World Six. So one four, um, we have our first auto scroller in the game. There's not going to be too much going on in the level aside from a bit of platform hopping and the raccoon leap that each runner uh, is picking up along the way. Uh, that will, of course, come in handy for the fork they'll be playing next. Uh, it may also be worth noting that auto scrollers are a good opportunity to keep an eye out for your score and coin count because there's always that possible risk uh, that you can get a coin chip later. Um, so just as a reminder, coin chips uh, can spawn in place of, uh, of one of the hammer bros on the world map. And this happens when your coin count is a multiple of 11 and the second to last digit of your score matches that coin count. So, for example, um, it'll spawn if your score ends in 80 and your coin count is 88, or in 90 and 99, and so on. And they could potentially, these ships can potentially pop up in worlds 1, 3, 5, and 6, so it's never too early to be wary of those numbers. Yeah, for sure. 1-4 uh, is kind of the first level you get in the game where you get to correct your point total and coin count and just get to set yourself up well for the rest of the game, or at least half the game. Uh, and hopefully not have to worry about those. Both runners have a pretty clean fortress there. Um, Zakubi going for the, uh, or getting the hammer bro early here actually, which is a pretty good RNG. Unfortunately, he takes some damage on that fight. So he's not gonna be able to damage boost in this level, but um, he won't lose too much time because he can just get the slide speed there and grab the P speed a little later here. So maybe loss, I don't know, a 10th or a couple tenths of a second. It's a really negligible time loss. Yeah, I have both runners going for the MFP tunnel. Unfortunately, no one getting it there. 
Um, and we see Mitch. It looks like he's taking a bit of a lead, but his Hammer Bro is still on the map. So uh, he did have a bit of a lead going into 1 5, and he probably still has a slight lead, but uh, uh, it's a pretty close race here, actually. I kind of expect when you have two runners of this caliber, what you're looking for in World 1 is we're going to probably see a sub 510 um, for both of them, or very close to that 510 mark. And without a doubt, it, it also depends on how many movements you're going to get with the Hammer Bros. Um, there was definitely that RNG element to it, but I, I think they'll, as, as you alluded to, they'll probably be sub 10. Yeah, and uh, we actually noticed a little difference there. Mitch able to get the Fire Flower from the Hammer Bro um, early, so he won't have to grab it on the airship, so he'll save that little half second here on the airship. Um, Zakubi's going to have to grab it here as well, and... Uh, there's going to be a slight difference in pattern just based on where they fought that hammer bro because uh, the game determines the boss pattern at the end of the airship based on how long it takes you to go from completing the last level to entering the pipe on the airship. So um, Mitch going to be getting the generally recognized easier pattern, but um, you know both runners shouldn't have problems with either pattern you get from this boss really. You just want to make sure that Larry doesn't jump right in the beginning because that'll probably cause the most time loss. So. Whatever pattern they get, they'll easily be able to get um, the first six shots with the, the Fire Flower, and then, if need be, they could just jump them into that shell state and then just fire off the last four. Yeah, we see them do the exact same thing. They're pretty much, like, they're synced. Like, it's, yeah, it's 509s. Both 509s. So, as I said, you know, you're looking... They're pretty much on the standard of what you'd expect from a runner of this caliber and a no-reset, so... So yeah, honestly, um, once you make it in the world too, they're probably thinking right now, it's a lot less stressful. Uh, once you get to this point, there's not as much risk at death in this world, I would say, as there is in world one. So um, most runners, you, just, you start to see a little bit of calming of the nerves here and a little bit of a uh, rhythm start to build. And they're both entering world two with their fire flower and um that you keep it right in the beginning. Unfortunately, Zakubi uh, didn't wasn't able to muster his PSP, so he's going to be going traveling through here a little bit slower. So uh, he did fall behind uh, by at least two or three seconds just now. Yeah, as mentioned before, yeah, that. Right. But yeah, as mentioned before, the, um, they just want to keep their Fire Flower as far as um, just long enough so that they can finish up that Ford because um, there isn't really going to be any point in which they're going to need to snipe any enemies. Um, from any point afterwards, and they'll be able to pick up another Fire Flower on the airship. Uh, God forbid anything should happen. Yeah, no, no matter what you do in World 2, even if you have to pick up the Fire Flower, assuming you take one of the traditional routes, which you should always take, uh, it really doesn't affect what you do on the boss fight at all. Um, you essentially do the same thing either way. Thank you. 
All right, everybody, we're back. So looks like Zakubi's taking a, a small lead here, um, going through four fort one. Looks like he does it pretty nicely, uh, mostly perfect there from him. So uh, it's always a, a relief when you're going through that stage and you go through it well. Uh, Mitch is entering four F one as well. He's uh, equipping the star as a safety measure just to uh, make sure he doesn't come in contact with the hot footer um, along the way. Looks like he has no problem with that, and he's full speed ahead to boom boom. Yeah, nice, uh, nice fort from him there. Um, Zakubi looks like he's entering four four here. I think he just took out a hammer bro, so I think they're even on hammer bros now. Goes for the um, the new uh, kind of task strat, I guess. It's one that Maru came up with there, um, where you you jump and fire the fireball there and save a little time in this stage. Unfortunately, taking some damage there from the uh, lack of two. And Mitch going with the uh, standard strategy here. Um, and has no problem making it to the pipe there without taking damage. So that's going to be a big boost for him, actually, um, not having to re-grab fire going forward. It doesn't take uh, terribly long to, to re-grab the fire, but it, it will cost him about two or three seconds. So that should even things up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you account for the slight time freezes, taking damage, re-grabbing it, you're like all of a sudden four or five seconds in. So um, should be probably like a four or five second difference, I would imagine, by the end of this world if uh, things stand up the way they are. Bad, bad. It looks like uh, Mitch is taking on 4-6 first. He has no problem just sniping out those Koopas along the way. Yeah, Zakubi choosing to go to four or five first. Uh, his hammer bros kind of led him there as well, but uh, that was ideal for him. You want to do that one to re-grab the fire, and then you're able to do four six a little quicker. Um, Mitch choosing to do four six first, just in case he takes some damage there, and he can always re-grab fire in four or five. It, it's usually the conventional route to do the um, four F two last, just so that you'll um, with the hammer bros all cleared, you'll have um, you'll have a predictable pattern for when you fight Iggy Koop on the ship. Yeah, that's a good point. If you uh, don't do the fortress last, you don't uh, get the bridge spawn animation, which actually does affect the boss pattern. It adds a little bit of time. Um, if you don't do that first, you'll get a weird pattern where he does jumps right away, and you can't really fire kill him um, at least quickly. Looks like they were both able to get their early peace beach dress. Uh, they both saved about two seconds uh, in the fort, just um, just by keeping it there as soon as possible. See, so, yeah, it looks like Zakubi probably going to have, I guess, maybe a 10 second lead here. But they're both entering the, the World 4 airship. Um, definitely the, the slowest scrolling ship in the game, but um, it also takes just about as long as the World 7 ship does. So um, both both ships will be clocking in around like uh, 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So um, as I mentioned before, if you want to uh, grab some snacks or go for a bathroom break, now is definitely a good opportunity to do so. Why would you not want to watch this beautiful level? I mean, it's just the best. Stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is uh, objectively probably the most boring stage in the game. Um, it's not the worst stage. I think everybody agrees 7-4 is worse in terms of playing. It's probably more, way more exciting to watch, though. Probably the most da uh, the most danger you'll come across in this whole ship is just the Rocky Wrench that Zakubi's um, knocking out a couple times. There is one part that you really do have to keep an eye on, and it's just um, for when you're making that long jump onto the last platform right before you enter the pipe. That's yeah, so. it's not like it's impossible to go through the flamethrowers if you miss it, but it's just a lot safer to be able to make the jump. But you don't want to cause yourself any more nerves than is actually necessary, especially when you're in a race. But yeah, um, obviously from this point, the game... Uh, sees a significant bump in difficulty. Uh, definitely in World 5, we'll notice it. Um, I, you know, I don't really expect either of these guys to make too many mistakes in World 5, to be honest. There is some potential there, though, and there are some treacherous levels there that you can really lose a bunch of time, but um, I, I generally, I'd say we start to see uh, quite a bit of separation in 6 and 7, so I kind of expect uh, them to stand pat here for a while. 
So it looks like um, Zakubi was able to take out uh, Iggy without a problem. For the first four fireballs are usually the the easiest to to land, and then you just want to make sure that that Koopa does doesn't go right into your face as he's making his leap. You just want to make sure you have enough time to land those last six. Yeah, it's worth noting Mitch doing that fight a little quicker. He uh, he's really aggressive on this fight and goes up and challenges Iggy there. So they'll both be coming up on World Five shortly. There's most of the levels in this in this world are going to be pretty straightforward in terms of execution. I would say that five three and five seven are, and are probably biggest factors where you really want to be careful. Yeah, um, five one here. There's really not too much going on in this stage. Um, Mitch does go for PT in this level, so. I'll be interested to see um, what happens here. Uh, looks like he's forgoing it, and I think that's smart. Yeah, there is there is one opportunity where you can get early B-speed going up the as you're scaling the steps in 5-1, in but um, even then, the time save would um, be pretty marginable. Uh, so. It's pretty much the hardest one-third second time save you could imagine. <laughs> So they were both able to get that early no block bounce in the beginning of 5-2. So definitely don't want to uh, miss it and then make that ball of shame where it'll cost you an additional 16 seconds just going through the long tunnel below you. Yeah, so in terms of how they're going to decide to do these next stages, generally you let the bros dictate um, which direction you go. You want to try to remove them as soon as you can and just kind of reduce the opportunities they have to give you movements of two if possible. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't always matter because that sky bro can give you movements of three or four as well. But um, Mitch actually putting him to sleep there, which uh, is a pretty standard strategy in World 5. Uh, you definitely see music boxes come out in Worlds 4 and 5. It's because they have the most potential in RNG swings in terms of hammer bro movements. That's a really good point. Um, looks like they're going to be entering 5-3 um, um, right now. Definitely one of the bigger gatekeepers in World 5 generally, and one of the longer levels in the game to endure maintaining peace before without taking any damage. And it's especially awkward since it's unique in the sense that you're moving from right to left for the first half of the level, and you want to have that meter filled as soon as you can so you can snipe out those two spinies. You want to be mindful of uh, when and where you're jumping so you can carry that momentum uh, past that vertical pipe on the far end. Uh, and if you can maintain that meter without getting frame rolled, you'll want to run over those small gaps containing the munchers while jumping as needed to make your way past the piranha plant pipes. So if you're for any reason you do take any damage, you will fortunately have an opportunity to pick up another fire uh, fire power up along the way. Yeah, thankfully that stage does have a fire flower. Um, that and it's really the only actually this is the only category you have the opportunity to pick that one up too. So every other stage skips that level because it's one of the longer ones in the game actually. They'll be coming up. At on... least that you can skip. Oh, uh, they'll be coming up on Spiral Tower. Um, it's a bit tricky in that you have to build peace speed in that very first floor while avoiding the road of discs and making your way over the small wall. Uh, you want to make sure that you time your jumps so that you can enter the vertical pipe to the second floor. So um, ideally you want to help maintain that pace speed to the top of the tower, but uh, those first two floors are especially going to be important, especially with those glumps that hang pretty close to the ground, so it's not very easy to just to skirt by walking past them normally. And you do get blocked yeah. in the clock a couple seconds. If you, if you lose some P-Speed by the fourth room, it's not a big deal. There's not much of a time difference between having P-Speed for that room and, and not, actually. So, um, But both runners actually maintain it pretty well here. It should be another 280, I think, from Mitch. Or, yeah, 280. So, um, making their way to 5-4 here. And uh, this stage looks really scary. And, I mean, it is if you miss a jump. But um, it's actually not too terribly difficult uh, if you just do the standard... Uh, speed jumps here both runners taking it pretty conservative there are some ways to save maybe a few frames but uh not particularly worth it in my book anyway to save like a tenth of a second and in 5-5 five, five, uh, there was an early p-speed strat that does involve doing a turn back on that first block you're standing on the beginning of the level so you can clear a path yourself uh with the fire flower past the paragoomba and koopas to build meter and then lift off just before you reach those three wooden blocks 
uh, you do uh, just want to make sure you don't bunk the top block, uh, just so you don't run the risk of getting that leaf power up that would otherwise kill your speed, and then mess up the strats for the later stages. Uh, and then from there on out, it's just a matter of platform jumping across the donut bridge. And as long as you're fast, you'll be able to dodge those fire piranhas that come up. Yeah, both runners are actually getting early P speed there, which is uh, very cool. Pretty rare to see both people get it. It's one of the more difficult gets in the game. Um, and then we're moving on in the 5 6 here, which is another auto scroller, but this one's kind of cool. Uh, these para beetles, this is their only appearance in the entire game. And uh, they are enemies, but they're also kind of used as these hovering platforms as well to help you get across the stage. Um, definitely one of the scarier auto, auto scrollers in the game, just because you've got these one tiles that you're jumping on. They're essentially one tiles anyway. And you'll notice that the runners are making a brief pause before they enter the pipe at the end of the level. And they do this because the the way the game loads the exits. So if you enter the pipe at the earliest moment possible, uh, it is possible to be crushed by the outer borders of the level whilst it's still scrolling and then take a death that way. And to be honest, I had no idea that was really a thing until around this time last year when I learned the hard way. <laughs> Most people make that mistake at least once. So uh, I pretty much everybody can relate with you there. Um, looks like Teeks, or not, sorry, not Teeks, Zakubi, you're, you're here with me, actually. Um, but you also get P-Speed in this level often, so, but yeah, getting some nice P-Speed there in 5.7. Uh, Mitch also getting the P-Speed in 5.7. Uh, it's definitely one of the levels you want to get some P-Speed in, because getting it versus not, it's probably like a three or four second difference in that level. So in 5 of 2, um, it's probably one of my favorite forts uh, to play visually, and interestingly to note uh, is that as long as you're always moving forward and not wasting any time, you don't have to worry about getting hit by any of the potaboos in the lava. And by the time you get to the fifth platform, you'll have enough space to build P-Speed just before you reach the dry bones. So depending on where you, um, if whether you stomp it or, or not, uh, will determine how far the, your jump will take you. And then once you're past the last two question mark blocks, uh, however, it may be worth doing, being a little bit cautious with a slight turn back just to avoid the last set of potaboos. Despawn the dry so bones. Yeah, we saw... We saw Mitch have a little trouble getting in that vertical pipe, and then uh, we saw Zakubi having a little trouble uh, finishing off the boss there. So um, it is worth noting that since Zakubi is able to take out that hammer bro a little quicker, he's going to save some time here over Mitch, because every time Mitch completes a level now, he's going to lose time versus Zakubi. Those dang hammer bros just always moving, taking away precious seconds. Um, so yeah, at minimum, he's going to lose... Oh, okay. Sorry. It, 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 never mind. He, he didn't move right after the Ford. You can still get a movement of four there. It's really strange, but um, only at, only after the previous level. So yeah, both are going to be moving in this auto-scroller here, and uh, uh, Mitch choosing the cloud over and take out that hammer, bro. Um, it's pretty much equal amount of time either way, really, because he was getting movement of two after this level. There's never an on-pace run where that hammer, bro, isn't hiding behind level 5-9. Yeah, he's not very nice, and then when he, you know, he doesn't do it, it's always in a bad run, except when it's finally the run. So yeah, this 5-9, um, pretty straightforward stage, just have the this uh, vertical side and partially side-scrolling stage as well. Um, you just have the two enemies in the whole stage, and they're pretty easy to take out. Uh, there are a couple scary jumps where you just do those um, kind of loop around jumps onto the next wood platforms. The first one in particular is a little scary. Uh, if you miss either one of them, obviously, uh, unfortunately, you end up dying. But um, at this point, they play that stage enough that shouldn't be a worry. And the best part is that um, when you're when you're ending off World 5, the, all the Hammer Bros are cleared, so you don't really have to lose any more time from that. And since 5-9 is only two spaces away each time, um, you can consistently get the, the same Roy pattern each time you you do 100%. So uh, they'll both be coming up on a pattern where uh, Roy just kind of goes towards them and just um, like rubs up against the ledge for a couple seconds, and it'll be just long enough to shoot 10 fireballs uh, right in his face. It should be an easy fight. Yeah, actually just a completely free fire kill. It's it's objectively the easiest fire kill in the entire game of any category. So he just stands there and, uh, as you mentioned, just takes 10. So. I'm not going to lie, though. It took me a really long time before I actually started incorporating the, the fire kill into my run just because I'm so intimidated by the possibility that he, he could jump and then just quake me to death. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially, uh, you know, you came from Warpless, so um, you're kind of used to him just creating some havoc on the screen, so it's a little different to see him kind of passive. So there's going to yeah. be like... I'm oh, sorry, it's like a... <laughs> you can go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, all I was going to say is that they're going to be coming up on World 6 now, so it's definitely going to be one of the, the technical parts of the run, so um, we may see a bit more of a, a swing in, the, in their time difference moving forward. Yeah, it looks like a little bit over 15 seconds here, but obviously we have some stuff coming up in World 7 clips in particular. Um, there's hammer bro movements in this world. There's really difficult strategies, so... Uh, a lot of things can happen from this point. This is a very close race for um, a category this long. So yeah, it's a really nice uh, P-Speed strat in 6-1 uh, there by Zakubi. Um, you shoot this fireball and you turn back there because Mario actually moves faster than his fireballs with P-Speed. So you kind of have to wait for him to catch up there to uh, take out that uh, first uh, Patui. And yes, that is their name, Patuis. You want to make sure um, he doesn't always uh, position himself in the same spot um, by the time you kill him. So depending on whether he moves left or right, that'll be your visual frame of reference for when you do your duck jumps uh, straight to the end. Yeah, so Mitch choosing to do 6-3 here. Um, actually getting frame ruled there. He was trying to get P-Speed in this level. Um, and it's a pretty common place to get frame ruled if one of your jumps just isn't completely perfect. Um, so what I mean there is P-Speed's checked every 8 frames, so one of his P-Speed checks just happened over a gap and he lost his P-Speed, unfortunately. A common issue you also run into in level 1-6 as well. Oh yeah, you know all about that one. <laughs> yeah, 1-6 one, one hasn't been my best friend this tournament, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's nobody's best friend ever. It hates everybody equally. So, um... They'll be rounding up 6-2 now. It's uh, one of the, the last levels where they can um, where they can safely make um, monitor their coin count as they enter as they uh, finish off these last three hammer bros. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, this is a really great stage to uh, correct your coin count and do some point total corrections as well. So, um, yeah, if either of those are a little out of whack, you can do that here. And Zakubi choosing a very excellent number to go with. Um, Definitely getting the uh, commentator's approval. Yes. All right. So yeah, that's that's usually yeah, the number. That, that's usually the number I go with uh, for when I do my runs, either that or seventy-one. And um, you could always <laughs> you could always be certain that you'll pick up like four or five coins and um, then definitely um, get five as you're making your way through the piece scratch in six four. Yeah, just as long as you don't have to worry about that 77 number. It's generally about where you're you're at at this point. Um, Zakubi getting some P-Speed there in 6-3, so he's going to save a couple seconds over Mitch. Uh, actually taking that jump there in this forward a little safe. Don't blame him there. He really isn't going to lose much time taking it that way. It's better to, um, you know, be safe than sorry, especially in this stage. So if you, you take a death here, you lose an insane amount of time in this stage, actually. He can have 77 coins, it looks like he, uh, that's exactly what he has now. Yeah, his point total is good though. Um, he should be okay here. Um, he's not going to be able to get um, to that uh, that 99 mark before he takes out these hammer bros, so he'll, he'll be fine. Um, getting some nice P-Speed here in 6-4, it's a pretty difficult strat. Um, I believe there is some sub-pixel involvement in this one as well, so there is an element of luck to that, but also you have to do that jump um, from that block, that for that ice block on the second frame you land. So not first frame, second frame. It's a very strangely specific uh, P-Speed strat. So we're, uh, Zakubi's coming up on 6-6 six, six now, one of the, the less popular levels uh, in the game, but I'm sure um, Haxa can tell you all about the, the despawn strats that uh, come up with that piranha plan. Yeah, you want to just uh, move really fast uh, to the right through the uh, woodblock section there, um, but it's really strange if you move really, really fast, uh, you won't get the despawn, so there, there's like a, there's a little bit of a Goldilocks issue there with it, but uh, for the most part, you don't really have to worry about that. 
Uh, Zakubi actually having a really great 6-6 there. And, oh, Mitch taking a death on the uh, green cheap cheap there, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, this is one of the more common stages to take a death in uh, World 6, just because um, you're small Mario and uh, there's a lot of these little obstacles you have to avoid. And um, rhythm is very important on the stage. And as we saw there, because he kind of rubbed on the ceiling, he got a little off on his rhythm. And now he's back on schedule and we see he's having a much easier time with it. We're seeing another despawn strat in 6-5 uh, as Zakubi was able to take out both of those nippers that would normally be on the uh, upper platform. So normally this would be a puzzle where uh, you would have to fly up with a Koopa shell and then just knock them out traditionally. But um, as Haxon mentioned before, despawns are usually a function of how fast you're going through the level so that um, as, as you're scrolling from left to right, um, the, the game doesn't process all the all the necessary sprites that are supposed to be on screen. So um, those yeah. two just disappeared yeah you're just looking at sprite overload essentially so um zakubi a nice little boost there um looks like he's got a stage lead here on mitch so uh, both of them have taken out all the hammer bros but uh there's a one stage difference between them here but there's still plenty of time for uh mitch to make this time up obviously in world seven so um well he's probably not gonna be super happy with that death he took um, he actually took it early in the level, so it won't be too big of a deal. Without a doubt, World 7 is definitely um, one of the equalizer worlds in this game, compared to uh, in Warplist, that culprit would usually be uh, attributed to World 8 with the, with the hand RNG. But since they're all going to be playing the, the same three levels anyway, um, it, there's not going to be much of a swing as far as that goes. Yeah, and here we are on the uh, last auto scroller here in World 6. Um, game's being very generous at this point. It's like, oh, let's just have two auto scrollers in every world here. Um, unfortunately, Mitch taking some damage there. Um, it's not too big of a deal. He'll be able to re-grab the tail in the fortress, but obviously uh, he would have liked to have kept that power up for the fortress um, in order to do it as fast as possible. So Zakubi, again, will have a little bit of time that he can... Um, uh, I guess take over Mitch here in this level. So um, looks like he's having a really good forward here. He's going to use this tail and damage boost there on purpose in order to keep his P speed and get to the door at 290. So it's about as fast as you can do. You can get to the door a little quicker, but uh, pretty crisp movement from him there. He was able to land right uh, flush with that last platform as he was making his way um, past the flying section. So he was able to really optimize his P speed pretty well. Yeah, and 6 8 here, we're going to see this block grab at the beginning. So he gets the jump and block grab, which isn't always super easy. Um, also, there's a lot of lag at the beginning there, so sometimes you have to worry about frame rule issues with uh, getting P speed, but no problem there for him. He's able to uh, do the stage optimally, um, which again, it's a nice little boost over um, not, unfortunately not grabbing and also jumping with the block, which again, I think both inputs have to be on the same frame for that to occur. So. As long as you're um, you're pretty um, you're pretty optimal with grabbing the block and then just making your way over from left to right, um, you shouldn't have to worry too much about getting frame rolled if you do it um, the same way each time. But if, of course, uh, in, if God forbid the uh, the lag frames do uh, mess up your P meter, uh, there is always that uh, backup strat where you can just damage boost, and that'll it won't it won't be as fast, but um, you'll still be able to have P speed for, for the end of the level. Yep, and uh, Zakubi making his way into 610 here. Having a really good 610, able to maintain P speed while grabbing that Fire Flower. So, pretty much doing exactly optimally there. Um, it's one, one of the hardest stages in the game to do optimally, so he's going to feel really good about um, the result there. The Buster Beetle right in the beginning of 610 has a bit of a Goldilocks uh, aspect of it as well, because um, if you grab the Ice Block too quickly, it won't grab its own Ice Block on the other side. So sometimes you can uh, get trapped when you're trying to maintain P-Speed and then just take damage that way. Yeah, that is a good point. You you can do a loop around and then, um, you know, keep P-Speed, but it, it does make it a, a little, little bit more difficult. So it um, looks like Mitch having no problem getting it either. So just going to be doing kind of these medium jumps here all the way to the end of the level. Meanwhile, Zakubi clearing out the fort and uh, making his way in the World 6 airship. Um, I do anticipate Mitch is going to fire kill his boss. He's quite good at this fire kill. I'm not exactly sure what Zakubi is going to choose to do. So um, we'll, we'll have to see if there's a little divergence in strats here. Um, 
And it also might depend on whether or not he realizes how much of a lead he has or not. I don't know if my third racer is uh, monitoring each other's progress. Yeah, I know Mitch usually does, so I think he's probably aware. I would expect him to uh, go for the fire kill here, but uh, you know, if Zakubi's aware, he might choose to forego it because if you got a, he's got a pretty significant lead. Um, where you know, unless he has a really bad seven one, he should be able to maintain a, a lead through World Seven unless something crazy happens. There's two uh, common ways that you could fire kill Lemmy. Um, even though you're gonna get the the same pattern each time, where he just kind of hangs up on the hangs out on the right side of the wall just long enough for um, for you to just stun him in place. Um, the the ref that I like to, the the version that I like to do is just to hit um, hit him with six shots uh, right in the front, and then um, bounce him so that he's in a shell state, and then just uh, fire the last four before he has a chance to move to the left. Um, there is the, the, the also the, uh, the, uh, the alternative strategy where you just kind of ride on his shell um, and then just kind of bounce against the wall to get those last shots in. Yeah, kind of as, as anticipated, Zakubi choosing not to uh, go for the fire kill there, knowing he has a lead. I think I think it's smart. You know, it's only like a four second difference, and uh, this this fight actually gets really chaotic if you take damage and aren't able to take him out quickly. So um, definitely not going to blame him there. Um, but this is an opportunity for Mitch to take back a little time here, so... From the time comparisons I've done, the fire kill saves about two seconds over the jumps. Yeah, it does kind of depend on how you do it as well. Um, there, there is the strat where you kind of ride the shell, and that one is the optimal one. And you save a little bit extra time there, but uh, I do know Mitch um, does a, a, a safer version that works for him. But he's actually choosing the stop here too. I'm a little surprised. Uh, generally does go for this, but... Uh, Probably just doesn't feel comfortable with it, and Zakubi looks like getting third try there, I think. So yeah, getting in the wall in 7-1, very important, as I know. It's definitely uh, something you want to see in your race. I don't doubt. So, um, didn't look like uh, Mitch tried to do any sub-pixel manipulation here, so I'm pretty interested to see um, how much luck he's going to have going into 7-1. He doesn't believe in it. He's not a believer, <laughs> but I he gets first try a lot. Uh, he's he's really consistent at uh, what he does in this level, so um, that consistency allows him to um, uh, get through this usually in a very few number of tries. So um, having a little trouble here. So of course I, I did curse him. It looks like, but uh, it's pretty common where if he doesn't get in first try, it seems like it takes him a few tries as well. Meanwhile, Zakubi making his way through 7-3 here. Um, pretty free level. Um, just kind of P-speed at the beginning there. Especially when you have big Mario, you don't have to worry about taking damage on any of the, the enemies that you could potentially take damage on here. Uh, man, this wall is just giving Mitch an unbelievable amount of trouble. I think we're up to 15 now. There's really nothing he can do about that. I mean, that attempt looked no different than the, a bunch of the other attempts he did. So it's just, he just got really unlucky there, it looks like. And uh, so yeah, he didn't even hit the hit the wall at any point. So I don't know. It's one of those things, 7-1, what can you do about it? Exactly. If he doesn't believe in the pixel manipulation, because even when you do do it, sometimes it still feels like a crapshoot whether you do get it on your first try or not. But even then, more often than less, you'll at least get it in four. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's you still have to, you know, do the uh, execution part of it right, and uh, that's not particularly easy either to be, you know, exactly consistent. So, manipulation just generally involves um, walking from left to right uh, in one or two frames, uh, just to make sure you can bring your sub pixel uh, value down, and it's preserved as you're transitioning through the cutscene and through, and through the through the map and, um it, it's really hard to it's really easy just to trip up and still have it as high as like 13. yeah um looks like he's got about two stage lead here on mitch um there's definitely opportunity for mitch to come back in this one but at this point uh you know he's gonna rely on zakubi to make mistakes uh it's pretty tough 
um, to come back without that. Uh, even if he went for something like 7-7, optimally that would only save, I don't know, about 17 seconds or so. And Man, this blooper is giving Zakubi all kinds of trouble. Like, nothing he can do will shake this guy. It's just coming at him. Um, I don't... You rarely see the blooper do stuff like that, so I don't... I don't know what, uh... What Indian bur burial ground he was by today or something, but... <laughs> So yeah, um, Mitch grabbing the shell here, um, looks like he had a little trouble uh, at the beginning portion of this level, but overall, pretty good stage. He's gonna get to the pipe about 281 and, and get out with a, with a 279, so it's pretty pretty solid. Um, you'll, you'll definitely take that, especially in a race, so. So, um, normally you do want to hold on to that Raccoon Fail to the end of 7-4 because you'll have an extra P-Wing left over for if you decide to fly over the first half of level 7-9. But uh, even then, even if he does take damage, he does have a backup strat where he can use one of his extra clouds to do 7-6 first before going into the fort and then grabbing the piranha, or vice versa. Um, but it does cost him a, a little bit extra time. Yeah, for sure. Um, he'll probably just star, yeah, he'll just star the piranha and um, then cloud over, probably use a P-Wing. So this will be an opportunity for Mitch to make up a little time, actually. Um, it, it is more significant than it appears because you got to do all that extra overworld movement as well as you're not able to do this stage quite as crisp. So, um, probably make up three or four seconds here. And yeah, the, uh, the hardest level in the game right here, um, 7-6, uh, you know, just go up above and fly over and you're out, so... You never see the inside of that stage in any category of this game. Uh, well, I guess small Mario Warp, listen. Oh, Mitch taking some damage there from the uh, the blooper as well. So bloopers are out for blood today. No doubt. It could also be a bummer. Yeah, man. It could also be a bummer is that even when you do uh, grab one of the question mark blocks to grab another power up, even that itself uh, generates a little bit of lag as well. Yeah, that is, that is a good point. Um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes, yeah, you know, these cheap cheeps can just come out of nowhere like it did there, so I'm um, getting a little unlucky in this stage. Well, thankfully, as long as Mitch has an extra star, he'll uh, also be able to skip by that extra piranha as well, and then he'll have his uh, few wings for the later stages as well. It's not something you really want to see uh, in terms of just, like, taking damage, but... So yeah, meanwhile, Zakubi making his way through 7-8 there. Um, you have to do that stage the way he did it uh, exactly as fast as he did it. So pretty much as fast as possible in order to get the ideal uh, fire nipper pattern, which is they don't shoot fireballs at you. So if you're able to, to do it optimally there, you get that pattern and you're out of the stage for free. So um, makes this stage that he's doing right now 7 7 a lot safer by having this extra power up just in case he rubs on a pipe or something here. So it didn't look like Zakubi went for the, um, for the pipe clip in the beginning of 7 7. And when you do have that lead, um, there's really no reason just to lose any more time than is actually necessary because just because of how low yeah. the success rate tends to be. Yeah, that's a good point. Even if Mitch gets it first try, he, you know, it's not he's not going to bring back all the time here. Looks like Zakubi is um, doing the P-Wing strat here. So uh, typically, um, if he's able to get through that um, from from there on out, um, it'll probably be about uh, a 39 second level. We'll have an opportunity to gain back a little bit of extra time if he was able to get some good wall clips going on. Yeah, he can get that clip over the gap and save about five seconds. So, um save a little bit of time there but yeah kind of at this point um you know he's kind of relying on on the stakes to happen as i said zakubi's having a really uh, uh great world seven here actually um we'll see seven four two is kind of a, a treacherous stage here so bad doubt but it's not my first time seeing um well uh just sniping things out with the fire flower and it looks like he's doing a really good job maintaining it Yeah, and doing that nice little uh, 
dry bones bop there and turn back to maintain his p-speed through that section so really great fort from him so it looks like mitch is opting to do the the p-wing strat as well for uh 7-9 see if he decides yeah it's really it's really tough to save time uh clipping through um, over the P-Wing strat, because even just P-Wing in the stage saves six seconds, so... And there it is. So he saves a bit of time in that stage. I do, do believe the optimal route is just to go for the bottom four wall clips, and if you're able to get each one on your first try, that's going to be uh, 26 seconds. So that's going to be about uh, 13 seconds faster uh, compared to if you did the P-Wing instead. Oh, did Mitch get 7-7? Seven, seven? I missed it. either so yeah depending on um how fast he got it that'll save a bit of time too as long as he got it in under um i think six tries he'll uh, save time so yeah if he got it second try save 14 seconds a nice movement with the fire flower from mitch uh as well yeah, really good for it. Um, and yeah, between that and the clip he did in uh, seven nine, he actually saved uh, about twenty seconds um, over where he was before. So uh, making a bit of a comeback here. It's kind of important for him to at least stay enough uh, behind Zakubi here, where if Zakubi does make a mistake, that uh, he can capitalize on it. Yeah, he's also making his way in the World 7 Airship, which is the longest level in the game um, in terms of total elapsed time. And also, uh, it's just a pretty long stage in general. Very long airship. So yeah, I'm, I'll be interested to see uh, if anybody fire kills Ludwig here. Um, I don't foresee Mitch going for this, but uh, I'm I'm pretty sure Zakubi does know how to do this fire kill, so I'm interested to see what he does here. It's not very often I see anyone go for the fire kill on Ludwig. Yeah, he's he's definitely a, a decent amount trickier than Roy. Um, as you, as you do notice there, he does fire his wand as soon as you enter the arena, so you have some time to put about four fireballs in him and then stop and put the other six in, but, uh, you know, if you mess up any any of the timing, uh, then he starts jumping around the map and uh, things can turn ugly really quick. And on, a, and on a auto scroller as long as this one, um, this is probably one of the worst places to take a death in the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you take a death there, it, it doesn't really matter at this point. Like, even though he's got a significant lead, if he takes a death there, it's over. He loses. Um, so, um, and that, that includes these auto-scrollers coming up, too, at the beginning of World 8. We get about five total minutes of auto-scrollers in a row, so, uh, you guys got your resident sleepers ready. <laughs> There's not going to be much going on in this first tank level. Uh, a lot of it is just going to be um, moving forward and then firing off on those rocky wrenches as they come up uh, while dodging the bomb bombs as well. One opportunity where they can reduce the leg and save a little bit of time just by bunking bomb bombs uh, against each other between tanks. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think it, for casual play, um, definitely these stages are much scarier, but uh, being that they play this game so many times, uh, you pretty much just stay in front of the auto-scrollers here, take out some of the obstacles that can be really annoying, like the rocky wrenches and some of the bombs, and as long as you do that, uh, you don't have to really worry about anything here.
Yeah, it's interesting. The really the the main difference in this race right now is the death in six six and the uh, the, the clips in seven one. Um, this would be really really close. Uh, even even if seven one went uh, you know even on on both, uh, it'd be a pretty close race just based on how well seven seven went for Mitch. Without a doubt, I mean. I mean, considering um, those difficulties that came up early on, I think that Dimitri is doing a really uh, good job keeping up, just generally. Yeah, he's he's doing a good job of staying in striking distance, so he's ready to, you know, if Sakubi takes a detonate one or takes a detonate two or something, Mitch is right there. He's ready to capitalize on that. So. Now's a good time, guys. I want to see those guesses on how many hands each player is going to get. Now, they have to play all three of them, but uh, the hand animation that pulls you in does lose an additional second and a half if you get it. So, uh, definitely want to see your thoughts on what's going to happen here. See if Sakubi goes for some some boat swag here. Normally those cans are just a giant middle finger to your runs, if, especially if you're doing uh, warpless. I do believe that um, the first hand is about 16 seconds, um, the second one is about 15, and the last one is 19. And that's just for in-game time as well. That's not even factoring in. Uh, you know, the fade outs and just the, the transitions on, on the map. So, ordinarily, you could lose up to about um, time if, if this was a force warpless. Yeah, I don't really understand it myself, but for some reason, the first and second hands, if you tarm it, or time at RTA, both take 20 seconds, even though you, you get in the pipe with a 193 versus a 194. I don't really understand but yeah um and you're getting p-speed in this hand and you're not in the other one so um very weird stuff there zakubi did do some boat swag and um you know as uh as always happens he's probably gonna get blessed with three hands for uh, having some boat swag so uh take that boat sw swag believers it's really interesting um just about this in-game timers like sometimes you could just do the the same stage the exact same way and then sometimes it'll either be a 295 or a 294 pipe it doesn't really seem to make a difference yeah that's a good point on the same frame you can end up with two different times so um just kind of the way the timer frame rule works in mario 3. so yeah zakubi having a good set of hands there uh, did get all three of them, so um, if you had three guesses for Zakubi, you are a winner. Collect your prize of my admiration. Mitch not getting the 95% hand, so um, at most Mitch can only get two hands, so 1.5 second time save here. You know, good stuff. Well, we see uh, Zakubi's on, on the Air Force, so um, not going to be much going on, just a, a lot of traditional um, platform hopping. Normally, this would be a pretty intimidating level um, if you had anything other than a Fire Flower, just because those um, front end just make sure that the Rocky Wrenches don't. Yeah, for some reason, I have more trouble on this stage with a Flower. <laughs> I take damage more often. I have no idea why. So Mitch getting two hands there. Um, so five total hands between the two. Uh, really unfortunate luck overall. But uh, again, the amount of time, total amount of time lost between five hands would be uh, seven and a half seconds. So um, really not a big deal in this category at all. Oh no, it looks like Zukubi just took a death. Uh, he just undershot that jump where the, the bullet bill cannons would ordinarily be. And so yeah, that's uh, gonna be an opportunity for Mitch here to actually catch up a pretty significant amount of time. Um, he's gonna have to grab this fire and lose additional time here. And uh, we'll probably see him take it. Oh, he's gonna go for it this time. All right, he gets it second try. So um, yeah, really good grab there. Um, that's actually where a crew died in the former 100% world record that pretty much did the, no, he didn't do the same thing there. He died at the previous uh, hole, but yeah. Pretty much in that same spot. So 
So yeah, actually at this point, it's gonna be really close if um, someone, if Zakubi were, for instance, to take damage on Bowser. So um, it's gonna be important that uh, he gets a, a decent Bowser pattern here, actually, and, and doesn't have to worry about taking damage. And taking some damage on the sun, not a big deal. He'll be able to re-grab fire in the fortress, but uh, pretty unfortunate RNG there. That's a really good point about Bowser. Um, sometimes you'll get a pattern where um, he'll he'll just jump at a really bad angle, and um, with, for the traditional strat that you would normally go for, there's just no way to escape it, and you'll inevitably take damage. Uh, alternatively, he could just jump early, and then uh, you'll just kind of be boxed in. Kind of play it a little bit safe, and then just jump over him towards the open space. Um, that it'll still cost you a little extra time, but you'll still be able to get the fire kill on him. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Mitch making his way through 8-2 here. Zakubi going through the fortress. Had a little trouble at the beginning. Um, probably not as smooth as he would have liked, but he made it out and he kept his fire, so I think he'll be pretty happy with the result. So yeah, this one's probably going to come down to the Bowser kill. Because um, yeah... Normally you only lose 25 seconds versus uh, fire killing versus not, but the problem is when you go in that fight with fire, you're expecting the fire kill, so you actually lose additional time because of that. Um, so you end up losing about 30 if you take damage on the fight. So this uh, could get really close if that were to happen. So uh, Zakubi's on the, the super tank level. So um, he's just going to be staying in the front row and then just firing off on those um, on those rocket wrenches. I've been dubbed as the patented day one affiliate Hourglyph Super Tank Strat trademark with a vengeance. Yep, yep. His lawyers will be happy with you. Yeah, as you mentioned, you just kind of stay out in front of this one. It actually makes it significantly easier, um, I think. So... Um... Yeah, Mitch just starting the stage here, so I don't know, maybe 30 to 40 seconds between both the runners here. It's like Zakubi's on pace for about a 111.40 um, if he does this next stage well. Like he tried to go for the elevator clip, wasn't able to get it. Still, um, very marginable time loss, so it only cost him like one and a half to two seconds, I would say. He's able to get the people's clip, and he does first try. But he's just gonna want to maintain P speed going into the room with the statues and the, the donut lifts. So he's in the clear to for the Bowser fight. We'll see what kind of pattern he gets. Yeah, he's through the door. That's that's the main thing. I think from this point, uh, he's got enough of a lead. He should be okay. Um, yep. Ends up taking Bowser out here. So he'll end up with, uh, I think it was about a, a 111.41 41 or 42. So uh, meanwhile, Mitch making his way to Bowser's castle here. And he's on pace for about uh, uh, 112.35 roughly. So everyone get your GG's out for you. Takes game one here of the best of three. So uh, Mitch is going to have some more opportunities here to uh, come back in this one. Um, one thing, you know, that he can look to in this run, he, he made some mistakes that really lost a lot of time. Um, unfortunately, uh, two of the bigger time losses, I would say just having a, a really long 7-1 and then dying 6-6. Six, six. So um, the fact that he was able to keep it pretty close despite those things, I think, uh, bodes pretty well for him. And yeah, Mitch finishes off of the watch. So yeah, as I mentioned, Zakubi now one game away from taking the tournament, but uh, don't go away, guys. We have, at minimum, one more game. 
And uh, we could have a second one if Mitch is able to take this next game. So um, we'll see if uh, either runner needs a quick break here or if we're going to go just straight in the second game. Uh, looks like they're both opting to go right into this next game. So um, I don't think... I don't think anybody really has to change anything from that first game. I think just, uh, you know, maybe clean some stuff up that didn't quite go right. And uh, we'll see some good runs.